Hello students, welcome to lecture 8 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. Today's lecture will be on um, reflection and refraction, mainly the Fresnel equations. So, here is a photograph of French physicist uh, Austin Jean Fresnel who put forward a transverse wave theory of light and the equations describing the partial reflection and refraction are basically named in his honor. So, Fresnel has made important com contributions in the theory of light diffraction. So, here is the lecture outline as you can see we will discuss briefly what is reflection and refraction. I am sure everybody knows about it still a very brief overview. Then we will revise the basics of T which is S polarization and also T m which is P polarization of light and then we will see how to derive the uh, Fresnel equations for S and P polarization. While doing that we will also uh, introduce the concept of Brewster's angle, critical angle, total internal reflection, Goose Hanchen shift, optical tunneling, frustrated total internal reflection and finally, we will see how to calculate transmittance and reflectance. So, let us look into what is reflection and refraction. So, this particular diagram I am sure you have seen it many many times in your school days as well. So, here is an interface between two dielectric medium, one has got a refractive index of n1, another has got refractive index of n2. Let us assume that the incident ray is basically a plane electromagnetic wave which is traveling in medium n1 and after traveling some distance it actually hits this particular interface. So, this is the interface of the boundary between two dielectric medium and as soon as there is a interface or boundary where there is refractive index mismatch or you can say there is impedance mismatch we know that there will be reflection. So, some portion of this incident ray will be reflected back in the same medium. Okay. So, how do you know the reflection angle? We have seen or we have proven that reflection angle is equal to the incidence angle. Okay. I am not going to derive that because that is very very uh, basic that you have studied in school. And how do you measure this angle? This angle is measured with respect to the normal to the surface of the interface. Now, some portion of the light is getting reflected. What is happening to the remaining light? Remaining light actually enters the second media that is N2. Okay? So, N2 medium or you can say medium 2 which has got a refractive index of N2. Okay? Same thing. Now, depending on whether N2 is greater than N1 or otherwise the refracted ray will be either close to the normal or it will be away from for, from the normal. Okay? So, in this case let us assume this particular case where N2 is greater than N1. In that case the light has actually entered a denser medium from a rarer medium. In that case the refracted ray will be closer to the normal. Okay? So, this particular law of refraction is also known as Snell's law. Okay. So, Snell's law basically relates this angle theta 1 that is the ang incidence angle with the refraction angle that is theta 2 and how they are related? They are related by this uh, equality which is sin theta 1 by sin theta 2 will be equal to n 2 over n 1 or you can write n 1 sin theta 1 will be equal to n 2 sin theta 2. Now, we have seen refractive index is nothing but the you know ratio of the speed of light in vacuum over the velocity of light in that particular medium. So, if you write uh, N2 as C by V2, similarly N1 can be written as C by V1. It means you can actually replace this ratio with the ratio of the speed of light in each of this medium n1 and n2. So, if you consider those speed as v, you can write that sin theta 1 over sin theta 2 
equals v1 over v2 so i am also calling them like v1 by v2 that is also same thing as v1 over v2 okay so they are the same thing fine so this is how you can also take uh, snell's law you can understand the meaning of snell's law that you know sin theta 1 over sin theta 2 is nothing but you know v1 over v2 the ratio of the velocity of light or plane wave in these two particular medium okay now let's move on to the concept of t and tm polarization in the previous lecture we have seen that t polarization is also called s polarization s standing for strike out okay it means we'll see that in such cases where you have two different materials a material one and material two and this particular is the interface of the boundary and there is an incident ray there will be a reflected ray something like this okay and that is a normal to the surface so you can draw a plane that contains all these three vectors that is the incident or incoming radiation reflected radiation and the normal so this particular plane is called the plane of incidence now in this plane of incidence there are two possibilities of the electric field vector to lie okay that is what the polarization is right so you can either have the electric field vector that is shown as red arrow here that is basically parallel to the plane of incidence so we can say this is parallel polarization or p polarization fine there is other case also possible that is this blue case in blue case what happens you know the electric field vector is basically out of the or it is basically striking out of the plane of incidence in that case you can call as s polarization so this is ste okay so you can say t or perpendicular or s they are all carrying the same meaning so these are the two polarization now why we are studying this because when a plane wave with a particular polarization is incident at the interface okay the way the polarization will interact with the interface will be slightly different for s and p polarization okay that is why we have to analyze the reflection and refraction for these two polarization cases differently here we are not bothered about the polarization we have not discussed about polarization but then we understood that with polarization the reflection of the light will be different and that is what the contribution of uh, fresnel okay so fresnel equations tells us to calculate or teaches us how to calculate the reflection and refraction or transmission refraction can be taken as transmission also right so it can tell uh, tell us how to calculate the coefficient of reflection and transmission okay so let us assume this particular case we are assuming the case of s polarization first now this is everything in the plane of incidence as you can see this is a 2d diagram so this is how the coordinates are marked this is x axis this is y axis and z axis is basically coming out of the screen now here you can see clearly that this is the wave vector k i okay i stands for incident so this is the incident ray mm. then there is the reflection that is k r that is a vector fine and then you have this transmitted one that is called k t this is n i the incident medium refractive index n t is the transmitted medium refractive index fine this is the interface angles can be marked very easily this is theta i this angle is theta r and this angle is theta t clear all these things are marked now we are assuming that this particular case is for s polarization now we know that for s polarization the electric field is actually striking out okay so this is how you put striking out if the field used to go in you will give, give show it like a cross okay so this is the, where the field is basically coming out hmm? so when you have this field coming out okay upon reflection also it remains same okay and 
while transmission also it remains same. So, the electric field is throughout okay, in the S polarization that is out of this page. Now, accordingly you can also mark what will be the magnetic field direction. So, how you do that? So, always remember E cross B will give you the direction of wave propagation. So, here the wave propagation direction is known E we have assumed that we are considering the one that is stri striking out. So, you can take E cross B and that should come in this particular direction that is in the direction of k vector. So, that way you will find that the B i that is the magnetic field vector is basically in this direction for the incident wave. For the refracted wave, reflected wave it is in this direction and for the transmitted wave it is in this direction. Okay? You can easily do E, E is up, E cross B, the thumb is showing the direction of wave propagation. So, that way you can always uh, verify that whether these directions are marked correctly or not. Now, let us apply the boundary condition. So, the boundary is basically here where y equals 0. Okay? And we have known from Maxwell's equation that the bound in the boundary the tangential fields, okay, the tangential electric field, tangential magnetic field, they are continuous. Okay? So, let us find out the component of the electric field okay, that is lying in this particular interface. Okay? So, the component of the electric field that lies in the x z plane which is this particular interface, x z plane is the interface okay, is continuous as you move along the across the plane of interface. Make sense? And here all these electric fields are all only in z direction. So, when you write at this particular interface, you can write E i at y equals 0 plus E r at y equals 0 will be equal to E t at y equals 0. So, these are the two fields on the you know one side of the interface and this is the field that is on the other side of the interface. So, exactly at the boundary you can write that these two fields will add up and give you this field. Okay? Understood? So, this is the boundary condition for electric field. Now, let us apply the boundary condition for magnetic field. So, we know that the tangential magnetic field should also be continuous. So, in that case we have to find out what is the tangential component of the magnetic field because the magnetic field vector is making an angle with the interface. right? So, if this angle is theta i, we can find out that this angle is also theta i and again we can say that this angle is also theta i. So, B i will have a x component, it is going in the minus x direction. Okay? So, the x component which is along this will be minus b i cos theta i. right? So, minus b i cos theta i and we are equating it at the you know interface. So, y equals 0. Similarly, if you take this one, you can find out the component is nothing but this will be along plus. So, there is no question of putting a minus here. So, you can simply write plus b r cos theta r and b r will be evaluated at y equals 0. Again, this one, this angle will be theta t, I am not showing, just do the same thing in all the cases. Here also, you will see that this component is minus b t cos theta t and b t should be evaluated at y equals 0. So, when you do that, you can actually get a Okay, so you have got the two equations, right? So one is this one that tells you about the continuity of the magnetic field or the tangential magnetic field at the interface. You also have the other equation that is this one, E O I plus E O R equals E O T. Okay, that is you know that the tangential component of the electric field are continuous. This is the tangential component of the or tangential magnetic field across the interface is continuous. So, you have got these two equations. Now, one equation is in the form of E, another is in the form of B. 
So we need to now you know convert everything to electric field because that is how we will be able to find out the ratio of the electric field vector that is reflected over the incident reflective field that will give us the reflection coefficient that is our final goal and also we have to find out the ratio of E t over E i that will give you the ratio of the uh, you know or that will give you the amount or the ratio of the electric field that is being transmitted right. So, with that objective let us see how we can proceed further. So, we know that you know E is perpendicular to k that we have seen. So, you can also write that E cross k can be simply written as so the cross product so they can be written as mod E mod E oh sorry mod k mod E. So, you can simply write k E fine. The other thing would be that this vector E cross k cross E can also be written as omega b. Okay. So, this is the relation we know that k E equals omega b okay. and you can write E equals omega by k times b. So, this is how you know electric field and magnetic field are related. So, if you take that you know you can actually convert all the um, magnetic field here into electric field. Okay. So, B can be written as E divided by this factor omega by k and omega by k can be also written as C naught over n. What is n? n is the refractive index of the medium. So, if you simplify this equation it becomes n E over C naught. So, that is much simpler form. So, B the magnetic field can be written as n e over c naught and we already know that theta i equals theta r. Okay. So, with that if you put it here, so theta i and theta r are same, they can be written as theta i altogether. So, you take cos theta i common. So, what you are left with this term and this term, they are both converted into electric field now. So, you get n i common okay. and then you have e why n i for both because both are in the same medium n i right reflection and incidence are in the same medium. So, you have got n i that this one e o r minus e o i cos theta i right and then you will have this term which is minus n t because n t is the refractive index of the medium where the transmission is taking place. So, you have n t cos uh, theta t and then you will have also E O t. So, finally, you see you have got you know everything in terms of the electric field. Now, you can substitute E O t using E O i plus E O r from the first equation and once you do that you get everything in terms of E O i and E O r. So, E O t is also removed. Okay? So, this is the thing. So, now if you take this equation and rearrange the terms and put everything like E O R on one side and E O I on another side, you get this is what you are getting. This is simply you know side changing and finally you get this. And from this equation it is very simple, you can simply do E O R over E O I and that is your reflection coefficient. So, you can call it as small r. And why it is given perpendicular? Because you are doing it for S polarization. Okay? So, you can get this one. right? So, R perpendicular is nothing but E O R over E O I and that is nothing but the ratio of uh, this over this. So, you get N i cos theta i minus N t cos theta t over n i cos theta i plus n t cos theta t. So, this is the equation for reflection coefficient for S polarized light. Similarly, you can calculate what is it for E o t over E o i and you will see that you are getting this particular equation that is 2 n i cos theta i over n i 
cos theta i plus and t cos theta t. You see the denominator remains same only the num numerator is changing. So, these equations are called the Fresnel equations for perpendicular polarized light or S polarization or T polarization. Okay? Fine. So, the same exercise needs to be also done for P polarization. So, in P polarization, the electric field is basically parallel. So, we take this particular direction of the electric field. Okay? So, this is this wave directions are fixed. Okay? So, K i, K r, K t, they are all known. right? So, this is how the reflection and transmission are, uh, will look like. Now, if you assume that the electric field is along this direction, again using that you know u cross b should be in the direction of k, you can find out the direction of b i okay? and that is the magnetic field. In this case, it is actually coming out of the page. Upon reflection, this upward uh, electric field will become downward like this. Okay? So, in that case, the magnetic field will also change the orientation, it will go into the page. But transmission will have more or less similar feature that of uh, you know the incident one, just that the transmitted ray will be shifted more towards the normal if we assume that this is a higher refractive index material than this one. So, analysis remains very much similar. So, first as we have actually done the calculation for okay, in the previous case it was straightforward for electric fields. Here the magnetic fields are only along z direction. So, the tangential component of the magnetic field at the interface will be easier to find out. So, let us assume the direction upward as positive and inside it is going this direction we can take as negative. So, here you can write that B O i minus B O r will be equal to B O t. So, this is positive, this is positive, this is negative. So, this is the equation that you get. And for the electric fields you can see that this is the tangential component that is <coughs> E i cos theta i. Okay? This one will have E r or you can say E 0 r hmm, cos theta r and this one will have E t cos theta t. So, this is how the components will look like. So, this is the equation that tangential electric field is also continuous. Now, what next? We need to convert this magnetic fields into electric fields. How do you do that? B equal n E over C. Go back n e over c. Okay? So, this equation you can use here and you get everything in terms of um, electric field and then when you take the ratio of e o r over um, e o i. Okay? So, you will get this is the ratio n i cos theta t minus n t cos, cos theta i over n i cos theta t plus n t cos theta t cos theta i. Okay? So, they look similar, but they are not same. Okay? Uh, you, if you put both the equations side by side, you will be able to see the difference. So, just a quick look. Here it is n i cos theta i. Okay? Here also it is n i cos theta i, but in the case of p polarization, it is basically n i cos theta t. Here also n i cos theta Okay? So, that is how they are different. Similarly, you can also find out what is the transmission coefficient that is basically E o t over E o i and this is the ratio. Always remember that reflection coefficient, transmission coefficient, the denominators are same, the numerators are different. Okay? So, this is the equation called Fresnel coefficients or Fresnel equation for parallel polarized or p polarized or t m polarized light. Okay? So, this is the summary here you I am putting the equation side by side you will be able to appreciate it more. So, this is the reflection coefficient for perpendicular or s polarized this is for t perpendicular this is t parallel this is r parallel. 
So, all these are the four equations that will tell you the reflection and transmission for S or P polarized light. Well and good. Now, if the light is normally incident that is your theta i equals 0. So, when you put theta i equals 0, you will see that you know the reflection coefficient for parallel and perpendicular polarization they become same. It turns out to be n1 minus n2 over n1 plus n2. Similarly, the transmission coefficients t parallel and t perpendicular also become same. They become 2 n1 over n1 plus n2. It is very simple. You put theta i equals 0 everywhere okay? and theta 2 you can also find out using Snell's law okay? uh, that is your theta t because you know n1 and n2 right. So, that way these equations get simplified. It is also very clear from this particular uh, case if you go back to the definition okay, that if you go here and you see that you know when the incident angle is 0 that is you are actually having light incident like this. Okay. In that case this plane and that plane they are also identical right because in that case you will not have a unique plane you can have plane either this way or that way because incident beam and reflected beam are now in the same direction or like incident beam coming up and up from top to bottom reflection will go from bottom to top but they are along the same line because you are having normal incidence. In short in normal incidence your both polarization become same or interchangeable. That is why the equations also show the same. So, you will get similar reflection and transmission coefficient for S and P polarization when you have normal incidence. Now, there is a concept called Brewster's angle that is very, very important. So, we have understood that the two polarizations become indistinguishable when theta is 0. Okay? And you will also see that there is total reflection when theta equals 90. It means when incident angle is 90 that you are actually having a light that is incident along the interface. What you will see? You will see the transmission is basically 0. So, you will get 100 percent reflection. So, total reflection is possible when angle incident angle is 90. Okay? Now, there is a possibility of 0 reflection based on the equations that if you look for p polarization, when you look for p polarization in this case, there is a possibility that reflection can be 0 when this term and this term becomes 0. And that is the case or that is the particular angle which is called the Brewster's angle. So, you can have theta p given as tan inverse of n t over n i. Now, if you consider um, air to glass interface okay, and air if you take as 1 and n t that is you know the transmitted refract, uh, refractive index can be taken as n glass which is 1.5. In that case, you can calculate and find out that theta p is equals 56.3 degree. So, this is a plot that shows the reflection coefficient versus the incident angle. So, as you can see when the incident angle is 0, both the polarization, this is for parallel polarization, this is for S polarization or perpendicular polarization. So, both polarization are having the same reflection coefficient when the angle is 0, but as the angle increases, they diverge both are having different values, but when the angle strikes 56.3 degree for the case of parallel polarization that is the case when the reflection coefficient will be 0 okay, for parallel polarization. It means the light will be only available in one particular polarization. So, Brewster's angle can be used to make a unpolarized light polarized by means of reflection only. So, if you actually change your incident angle to this particular angle the 56.3 degree at a air glass interface means one side is air another side is glass you are shining light on the glass. Okay. If you shine light at a 53.6 degree angle the reflection light will be only perpendicular polarized. Okay. That means it will be only S polarized the P component is 
not there okay fine so this is brewster's angle there is another important concept called critical angle which you must have studied in the school days also so these are all coming from the snell's law okay on different kind of possibilities that if you assume that this is a denser medium and this is a lighter medium and uh, that is written here n1 is greater than n2 and we see that you know the angle of refraction okay is larger okay so what happens when you have critical angle the transmitted ray is basically goes along the interface okay that means the angle of transmission is 90 degree so that is the definition of critical angle so you get theta 2 equals 90 degree okay now in that case th if theta 2 becomes 90 degree so this is 1 so you can simply write and theta 1 is nothing but your critical angle that is theta c so theta c can be written as n2 over n1 so you can write what is theta c that is sine inverse of n2 over n1 and this is only applicable when the light ray is propagating from denser to rarer medium so this is the concept which also brings in what happens when light is you know incident at an angle larger than critical angle so that will bring you total internal reflection now when the incident angle theta i is greater than the critical angle theta c you will get no transmission in the second medium all the light that is incident will be completely reflected back okay so there is no partial transmission complete reflection that is why it is called total internal reflection okay however an evanescent wave actually propagate along the boundary okay so that is basically high loss electric field propagating along the surface evanescent fields do not propagate too long because they are very lossy okay so these are the three situations as you can understand so here theta i is much smaller than critical angle so you get the normal reflection and transmission transmission is nothing but the refracted light this is the case where your incident angle is exactly same as the critical angle so you get this is the incident light you get some reflection and the transmitted light is exactly along the interface okay and when you have incident angle larger than critical angle you will see that there is some reflection and this light is also now coming back in the same direction so you are getting everything reflected just that a bit of um, you know electric field will be propagating as a lossy wave that is evanescent wave along the interface so this is the case of total internal reflection so total internal reflection gives rise to evanescent waves right and this allows you to satisfy the boundary condition at the interface in case of total internal reflection fine so if you look into the field in medium 2 so this is the field in medium 2 that propagates along the boundary edge at the same speed as the incident wave and dissipates into the second medium so you can take et perpendicular okay the tangential transmitted one okay for the perpendicular one polar polarization you can write it as y z t okay so e to the power minus alpha to y so this is the you know y direction so this is how the field decays that is how the amplitude of the evanescent field will decay uh, exponentially into the medium and then it will also propagate as e to the power j omega t so it will oscillate and propagate and the direction of propagation is as along z so this direction is z we can take okay so the evanescent wave vector is given as k i z okay and you can write that k i sin theta i okay so k i z can be written as k i sin theta i that is basically the you know um, sine component of the incident wave vector right and alpha 2 this alpha 2 that you see as i mentioned this is basically the um, attenuation coefficient that can be calculated as 2 pi n2 so n2 is the refractive index of this medium over lambda what is the wavelength mm, in vacuum into square root of n1 minus n2 whole square sine square theta i minus 1 so this is how you get the attenuation coefficient 
So, we can consider penetration depth in, in this particular medium 2 as a depth where delta penetration depth is defined as delta, delta can be taken as 1 over alpha 2. So, if you take y equal delta that is 1 over alpha 2, what do you find? You find this field comes down to be e to the power minus 1. So, that is where the definition of penetration depth also comes in. So, where up penetration depth is the depth where the field goes to 1 over e of the initial value and that is how it is obtained. Okay. So, I hope it is clear that when total internal refraction takes place, there is an evanescent field that is excited at the interface, but the evanescent field decays exponentially in the medium and it tries to propagate, but it is a high because it is decaying, it is a very lossy one, it will decay down and it will not be able to propagate any further. Okay. So, it only decays uh, or it stays there for a small distance, short distance. There is another concept called Goose Huntsman shift. So, that is also related to the total internal reflection. So, if you see the total internal reflection, the reflected beam in total internal reflection appears to be laterally shifted. It does not come from the exactly same amount, the uh, same point where the incident field is. It is laterally shifted okay, by some amount called delta z. Okay, as if it is getting reflected from a virtual reflecting plane that is somewhere inside. Okay. So, as mentioned, it appears that it is reflected from a virtual plane at a depth d okay, in the second medium from the interface and this lateral shift, shift is known as the goose Hanchman, Hanchen shift. Okay. And this uh, shift also depends on the angle of incidence and the penetration depth. So, you can see the formula here. So, delta z that is this shift is given as 2 d 10 theta i. So, it depends on the angle of incidence and d can be roughly taken as the penetration depth. So, it depends on both penetration depth as well as the incidence angle. Okay. And when this second media becomes very thin, okay, in that case, the field will be able to penetrate, you know, this interface and go into this medium B and then it will also be able to reach the other side of the interface. Okay. So, you will see that what is supposed to be a total internal reflection, but as the field is able to penetrate this thin layer B, it is also able to reach somewhat outside. Okay. So, this light was initially not allowed, but because of this thin layer, light has now tunneled through this different medium, although it is you know having that kind of condition. So, this particular light is called optically tunnel light. So, let us see uh, how do we describe this. The phenomena in which an incident light is partially transmitted through a medium where it is forbidden okay, in terms of simple geometrical optics. So, if you take a simple geometrical optics and you make sure that your theta i is greater than theta c, that means you are supposed to get a total internal reflection. It means no light should be able to go on the other side of the medium. But what you have seen that because this thickness is so thin. Okay, but or you can say this layer is so thin that the field is actually able to penetrate and go to this interface and from there it gives rise to a transmitted wave in the medium C. So, it is basically optical tunneling okay. and this is happening all because of the evanescent field that is able to penetrate into medium B and then it could reach the you know interface of B and C before it vanishes and that is where this optical tunneling will come into picture. And this has given rise to a very interesting uh, effect called frustrated total internal reflection or FTIR and using this effect people are able to make beam splitter. Now, let us look into this particular prism, this yellow one is a prism. So, here you see you are actually having an incident light and when the incident light angle is larger than the critical angle, you are getting total internal reflection. 
so this is one class prism now if you bring another class prism next to this first prism but introduce a small gap of air okay in between that means you have a low refractive index transparent film say n2 in between in that case what is happening that this particular effect will take place that this is the air region okay where the evanescent field will be able to penetrate and come to the third region where it will be able to transmit again though it was forbidden but because of this thin layer it is now allowing so what is happening the incident light will now get split into two ways one is the reflected one one will be the transmitted one and that is how a beam splitter works okay so some portion of the light energy is now able to tunnel through here this through this thin film and it can get transmitted into c and finally out of the cube so this is a very very important device people have used and continuously using beam splitter that is based on this frustrated total internal reflection effect so understand uh, with overall understanding of uh, all this conditions of reflection and refraction or transmission now let us finally calculate that transmittance capital t all the previous parameters were reflection coefficient transmission coefficient they were given with small letter small r small t this is transmittance this is basically the ratio of the transmitted power over the incident power so if you take in talk in terms of intensity so i t is the transmitted intensity multiplied by the transmitted beam area a t is the area of the transmitted beam over i i into a i okay so what is i intensity it can be written as roughly we say that intensity is proportional to amplitude square modulus or amplitude square or exact relation is n epsilon not c not over 2 modulus of uh, e not square that is electric field amplitude square and what is ai at over ai so upon transmittance we have seen that you know because the beam is going from one refractive index medium to another refractive index medium there is a change in the beam width okay so the beam width can change to wt from wi and that can be written in terms of cos theta t over cos theta i that means if you try to match the width uh, at the boundary okay they have to be same and that is how you can actually get this ratio okay so you can find this ratio as cos theta t over cos theta i okay so finally you can find out what is transmittance t so it is i t a t over a i i i a i okay so this is how you do it fine so a t over a i can be simply written as okay cos theta t over cos theta i so when you do that you can find that you are actually getting a ratio of eot square over eoi square okay and eoi eot over eoi is nothing but small t this transmission now depending on which um, polarization you are talking about you are talking about s or p polarization you can put the formula for t perpendicular or t parallel so this will be your t square right so this can be t parallel square or t perpendicular square and then you have to multiply it by this factor that is n t cos theta t over n i cos theta i so this is the formula of transmittance so transmittance capital t is basically n t cos theta t over n i cos theta i times small t square now small t you will pick from either this or this depending on s or p polarization similarly in the case of uh, reflectance life is slightly easier because here the beam width will be similar because the beam is uh, basically in the same medium okay so you do not need to worry about the area because the ar and ai will be same intensity you have seen they are basically proportional to um, you know n and also e naught square again here n remains same so only e naught square will be coming in the ratio right 
So, reflectance R will be simply you know you can put it as E O R whole square over E O I whole square and the ratio of the electric field is basically small r right. So, you, when you take square of it, it is basically r square. So, that becomes capital R that is reflectance is basically nothing but reflection coefficient square and again depending on the polarization of the electric field whether it is S or P polarized you can choose either this formula for R perpendicular and or you choose this one R parallel. So, this is the summary of uh, this R and T polarization that you know at normal incidence the reflectance will be same okay you will have uh, r perpendicular will be equal to r parallel and this is given by n1 minus n2 over n1 plus n2 whole square and you can also find out what is the transmittance in that case so transmittance will be 4 n1 n2 divided by n1 plus n2 whole square okay so always remember that reflection coefficient and reflect transmission coefficient they may not add up to 1, but because the power will be maintained. Okay? So, whatever is the incident power some part of it is getting transmitted so reflected some part is getting transmitted. So, the reflection power and transmission power okay, will be equal to the incident power or you can say reflectance plus transmittance will be equal to 1 which is not true for small r and small t this is only true for capital r and capital t okay so this is the summary of this particular reflection and transmission coefficients using fresnel equation so with that i'll stop here in case you have any queries you can drop an email to this particular email address mentioning MOOC on the subject line. So, in the next lecture we will uh, start discussion about absorption, dispersion and scattering of light. Thank you.